Hello and welcome to another episode. This one's all about the new version of Kia Connect that's come out on iOS. Um, I'm comparing it with iOS and Android because the Android version is about three points, uh, minor versions behind. So you can see the differences in the menus and I'll go through all of the changes, what's moved and what's new because there are quite a few new screens and features. So if you open Kia Connect and go to the More tab, you'll immediately notice in You'll immediately notice that some items are missing, like My Trips and Charging and Energy. And on the new version, you've got Alert Settings, Alert Services, and EV Services. Uh, and those are new features and menus. If you go back to the home screen on the new version, on iOS, you will now see you've got EV Service and Alert Services. Um, I've changed the order of these so they'll appear at the top of the screen and then I've also got vehicle status just below that um, because the vehicle status menu has also changed and got more features. So I'll go through them one by one. EV service is now where you will find set charging limits for DC and AC. Charging completion alerts is also in there. Um, next down is alert services. Now you can set some restrictions for valet mode but you can also set alerts for geofencing, speed and time fencing for normal driving. Um, I've tested some of these and on the time fencing one um, I had it alerting me every minute but whilst I was driving outside of the hours. It doesn't actually stop the car though so that's a shame because these features would be great if you could actually set the valet mode to disable the car from being moved or, or, it, or it would stop after a certain amount of distance or, or whatever restriction you put on it. But um, they would probably have to update the car's internal systems to work with this update. So I don't know if that will ever come, but it would be nice if it did. So under valet, you can set a driving boundary in meters and speed in kilometers and idle time in minutes and you can turn that on or off. You can set the geo fence boundaries for normal driving and the speed and the time fencing so you can just put the time periods where, when you don't want it to be active and it will alert you that it's been active. I suppose it's ideal if you've got more than one driver or if you've got kids who drive your car and you want to know where they've been or if they're driving it out of when you when you don't know about it. Um, so it's probably useful for that. So speed, just set the speed. Time fencing, you had to put the time fencing period in, which I, I did for testing, which was a whole day, and that's when I was getting alerts. And then save them to the car. I don't want to, I don't want to save them, I just want to keep my valid mode settings the same. And below alert services, um, if you go into vehicle status, the next things that moved, under vehicle management, vehicle report. And you now got these graphs, um, which are new, um, driving info. Um, so you've got a distance graph, a time graph, an average speed graph, and a top speed graph. And then if you click on driving detail, that's where my trips has gone to and that works exactly the same and then your energy consumption screen has gone to there obviously that's for today so uh, it's not showing a fat lot and then your diagnostic screen has gone to there And your odometer reading is also in that screen as well. So that's moved from inside status, so it's buried in deeper in the menus. And then your diagnostic results. And those are the main changes. Now, um, you can also get to those from more. And then alert settings will get you to the alert settings and EV service will get to the charge and limits.
Also, when I first opened this new update, it asked me to fill in the consent and advertising. Now, under consent, it talks about something called Kia Market for da data sharing for Kia Market. So, I don't quite know what that is, but maybe something upcoming. So, I, I, I turned all those on. I mean, I'd like to see what they are eventually. Anyway, the version number wise, we're on 2.1.12 now on iOS and we're on 2.1.9 still on Android. But I expect the Android version of this to come uh, sooner rather than later. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.